time, folks, in this lesson, I'm going to summarize uh, the reason for the seasons on Earth. Uh, here are the learning objectives, so if you'd like to pause and review them, please do. Here are some key terms that um, I'm going to use throughout this presentation, so if you'd like to pause and define them or summarize them or refer back to them during the video, um, I recommend you do. So the main idea is the Earth has seasons because it is tilted on its axis as it revolves around the sun. That is generally the answer that you're going to hear. And it's a true answer. The reason why we do have seasons is because the Earth is tilted as it orbits around the sun. However, what most people aren't really able to explain is how that tilt actually causes temperature changes to occur on Earth. And because the Earth is tilted as it revolves around the sun, so you see in this picture, it's it's tilted on its axis as it's rotating and revolving around the sun. You can see that the tilt remains the same as it revolves around the sun. Um, and what happens is, is that because of that tilt, you're going to have a, sh a short day here as the north is tilted away, and you're going to have a longer day here in the south as it's tilted towards. So that's why it's winter here in the north, and as the earth orbits the sun, and it remains tilted here. Now the northern hemisphere is receiving more direct energy from the sun and that makes it summer. And then down here in the southern hemisphere, um, it's receiving less energy from the sun. So one thing you'll learn right away is that the north and south always have uh, opposite seasons. One thing that's really important to understand is that the distance the earth is from the sun has nothing to do with the seasons whatsoever. In fact, an amazing truth is that in January, which is winter time in the north, technically the earth is closer to the sun. So that just further demonstrates that the distance has nothing to do with the seasons at all. Um, we're actually further from the sun in the summertime in the northern hemisphere. So distance has nothing to do with the seasons whatsoever. So the, there's really four reasons why we have temperature changes in seasons on the Earth. And obviously, number one is that the Earth is orbiting the sun. As it's orbiting the sun, it is tilted about 23 and a half degrees on its axis. If the Earth was not tilted, we would not have changes in seasons. The temperatures would be different at different latitudes on Earth, like the poles would be cooler and the equator would be warmer, but they wouldn't change. So the fact that we are tilted on an axis is the reason for the seasons. Because of that tilt, it causes the angle of the rays that reach the hemispheres on Earth to change. And because of that tilt, as it revolves around the sun, it causes the length of day to change throughout the year. So I'm going to break down each one of those points one by one just to make it really clear. So number one, the reason why we have seasons is the Earth is orbiting the sun. So it's certainly not the cause of the seasons, but if the Earth didn't go around the sun, then the, the tilt um, of the Earth wouldn't have an impact at all on the seasons. So the Earth orbits the sun approximately every 365.25 days. That's one revolution around the sun, which equals one year on Earth. So one reason that we have seasons is because the Earth is orbiting and revolving around the sun. The second, and it's vitally important, is that the Earth is tilted on its axis. The Earth is slightly slanted as it orbits the sun, and because of that tilt, it's going to cause um, the angle of the rays and the length of day to change as it goes around the sun throughout the course of the year. So one important detail for for number two, that the Earth is tilted on its axis, is that the tilt remains the same as it orbits the sun. So you can see that the tilt isn't really fluctuating. It's staying in the same position as it orbits the sun. But the way the rays from the sun strike the Earth are going to change as it orbits the sun. So the tilt, the tilt has remained, you know, in the same direction at all times as it revolves around the sun. It's not changing. Um, because the Earth is tilted, we have two days of the year where you have a solstice. And what that means is basically when the tilt of the Earth is at its maximum towards the sun, that would be a solstice position. Or when the tilt of the Earth is maximum away from the sun, that would be a solstice position. This occurs two times a year. So when the Earth is tilted towards the sun, in one hemisphere. So in this case, you see that the northern hemisphere here is tilted towards the sun. It's receiving more direct energy from the sun, which causes the northern hemisphere to be warmer in the summertime. And that's because the north is tilted towards the sun. 
But because the Earth is tilted on its axis as it revolves around the sun, now the northern hemisphere is tilted away from the sun, and the south is tilted towards the sun, now it's summertime and the south, which is in this case, in this particular position, it would be a solstice because it is the maximum tilt towards the sun. And everywhere in between would be fractions of getting closer to or away from summer. So at this point, I really want you to understand that the north and south are always opposite. Their seasons are always opposite. When the north is tilted away, the south is tilted towards. When the north is tilted towards the sun, the south is tilted away. So the northern and southern hemispheres are always opposite. Now, when the tilt is away from the sun, so here you can see the north is tilted away. I know that's winter in the north because it's tilted away from the sun. And this is when, in this solstice position, is when the north is most tilted away from the sun. And this would be the shortest day of the year for the north. And it would also be uh, the more indirect rays from the sun, which makes it cooler. And then as the earth revolves and the axis is fixed in the same position, now all of a sudden that the northern hemisphere is at its maximum tilt towards the sun, which would make it summertime in the north. And it's also receiving more direct rays from the sun, which would make it warmer. So the solstice positions are when the tilt is at its maximum, whether it's maximum towards the sun or maximum away. And it occurs two times a year for the northern and southern hemispheres, which are always opposite. Now, there's also two positions of the year that are called equinoxes, where the north and south are relatively equal uh, as far as how long their days are or the amount of rays that they're receiving. So first, in this picture, we're looking at Earth and the sun from the top. We're not really looking at it from the side. We're looking at the top. And here I can see that the northern hemisphere, as it's rotating, is tilted away from the sun. So I know this is winter time in the north. And what happens is, is that tilt, you know, is revolving around the sun and here the tilt really isn't toward or away from the sun which is why i wanted to show you the top view you can see that this tilt you know is an imaginary line that goes through the earth and it's not tilted towards the sun and it's not tilted away from the sun it's relatively equal so this would be a equinox position where the northern and southern hemispheres are relatively equal and then as that tilt continues to revolve around the sun, now you can see that the northern hemisphere as it rotates is at its maximum tilted towards the sun. So this would be a solstice position, a summer solstice position for the north. And then that tilt gradually becomes more and more equal at an equinox position where it's not really tilted towards or away from the sun, it's relatively equal. And then it gradually becomes more and more of a solstice position. So, um, what I see here is that because the north is tilted away from the sun here and it's gradually getting closer to the summertime, this must be spring because it's gradually getting warmer because that tilt is going to get closer and closer to the sun. And then what happens is, is this is the summer solstice position. We're gradually becoming more and more equal and getting closer and closer to maximum tilted away from the sun, which would make this fall. Another word for fall is autumn, and another word for spring is vernal. So you might want to study those words and make sure um, you have those in your notebook and review them. So here is a solstice position because it's tilted maximum away from the sun. Here's an equinox position. Here's a solstice position because it's tilted towards the sun at its maximum. And then here's another equal equinox position. So the, the third reason why we have seasons, and it's a result of the Earth being tilted as it revolves around the sun, is the way the rays strike Earth, and that's changing because of the Earth's tilt. So when we're tilted towards the sun, the rays that reach Earth are more direct, and they also are concentrated in a smaller area. So not only are they beaming down more straight on the surface of the Earth, but the same amount of rays are in a smaller area. But in winter time, you have those rays are at more of an angle and they also are spread out over a greater area. So that same solar energy is, is spread out over a, a larger area, not heating up the surface as, as quickly. So here's another picture that exhibits that because we're talking about like, you know, large areas of Earth, not just like a small area with a tree. We're talking like when the Earth is tilted away from the sun you have that solar energy spread out over a larger area, which causes it not to heat up as much. But when we're tilted towards the sun, 
that same energy is in a smaller area, so it heats up that section of the Earth a lot quicker because the rays are striking directly into a smaller area. So when we're tilted towards the sun, we get direct rays and higher temperatures. And when we are tilted away from the sun, that same energy is spread out over a greater area, making it cooler. So because the Earth is tilted, this is one of the reasons why the temperature is actually, you know, cooler in the winter and warmer in the summer. Now, the equator is generally getting direct rays all the time, which is why it's called the equator. and It's always generally warm at the equator. The last reason why we have seasons is because the Earth is tilted on its axis actually changes the, the, the length of the day. So obviously a longer day would be warmer temperatures and a shorter day would be cooler temperatures. So you notice in the wintertime it gets darker much earlier. In the summertime it's light out much longer. So I want to explain why that happens due to the Earth's tilt. So you can see here the Earth is tilted on its axis. It's going to rotate every 24 hours as it revolves around the sun. So as the Earth rotates here, since the north is tilted towards the sun, you can see that this is a longer day. So here it's going to be a longer day. And here you can see this is a longer amount of time that the north will have daylight as it gets um, energy from the sun. On the flip side here, the south is tilted away from the sun. You can see that all of this is less time of the day. So here you have a shorter day. Here you have a much shorter day. In fact, here it's not even going to see sunlight, which is going to make it significantly cooler in the poles. Um, so you can see here that this is, this is a shorter day right here in the south compared to right here where you have a longer day. And up here in the north, there are months of the year where the sun never sets. Now, the reason why it's cooler up in the poles is because it's never really getting direct rays from the sun like the equator does, but it will have longer days, and the, the north and south pole do have seasons. Down here, it's you know dark for months and months of the year, and um, it's also always getting indirect rays from the sun. But you can see right here, if you just follow this, you know, this line here, you can see that this right here is fractions of lost hours of daylight for the south in winter and here this slice of the pie right here is a longer day in the north which would not only is it getting more direct rays but it's also having a longer day here this picture kind of simplifies what i'm saying here so in the winter time the angle of the sun in the sky is much shorter so the sky the sun in the sky is 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 not there as long and then on top of that the angle that is striking the surface is over a larger area and then in the summertime the, the angle of the sun in the sky not only is the sun in the sky for a longer amount of time which is going to heat the earth more during that summertime but the angle is striking the earth at a much more 90 degree angle causing the energy to be concentrated in a smaller area so when in winter time you have shorter days the sun is in the sky less time and the angle of the rays are striking the earth over a larger surface area and then in the summertime not only is the sun in the sky longer but the angle of the sun's rays are striking more directly and concentrating that energy in a smaller area and those are the reasons why the temperatures actually change and those are obviously caused because the earth is tilted as it revolves around the sun so the four reasons for the seasons the earth is orbiting the sun it's tilted on an axis that remains the same. And when we're tilted, you know, away from the sun, the angle of the sun's energies are more indirect. And when we're tilted towards the sun, the angles of the sun's energies are more direct. And then because the earth revolves around the sun, it's tilted on its axis. When we're tilted towards the sun, the length of day is longer, which makes it hotter. And when we're tilted away from the sun, it makes the length of day shorter, which is less energy. So this picture here are some of the diagrams that you're going to be needing to analyze. So I want you to be able to dissect it. And what I always do is I always start with the solstice positions because they're the easiest to identify. So you can see position C and A are solstice positions. Now what I know is that here the northern hemisphere is tilted away. So that's wintertime. And here the south is tilted towards the sun, which makes it summertime. And then on the flip side here, I see the northern hemisphere tilted towards the sun. And I see the southern hemisphere tilted away from the sun. So here it must be summertime because it's tilted towards the sun, and here it's wintertime in the south because it's tilted away. So the first thing I want to show you is that 
when you're tilted towards the sun, you see how the rays of the sun will hit directly in the northern hemisphere, which not only are the rays direct, but it's going to cause the, the day length to be longer as well. So I know that in the northern hemisphere right here that's getting direct rays, it's summertime. And I always look for that first. If it's tilted towards the sun, it's summertime. So watch what happens over here on the other side. As the Earth revolves around the sun, you see here the rays from the sun are now hitting directly in the southern hemisphere, which makes this summertime in the southern hemisphere. So notice that the north and south are always opposite. Now here, the rays of the sun are going to be striking at an indirect angle in the northern hemisphere, which makes that winter because it's tilted away and it's getting the indirect rays. And then on the flip side, well, here what happens is we got winter and then the earth is revolving this way. So we can figure out whatever these seasons are and then that'll take me to summertime. But summertime, getting closer to wintertime in the north is going to be fall. And these are generally always the fall and spring seasons. That's not always true, but it's generally true. Um, and remember, north and south are always opposite. But what I can do is if it's winter here in the south, it's going to get warmer to summer. So since we're getting warmer, this must be spring. And then here it's winter time in the north. It's getting gradually warmer to summer in the north. So that must be spring. And then in the north, in the southern hemisphere, it goes from summertime getting colder to winter time. So really, I would always do one hemisphere first, and generally just do the northern hemisphere first, you know, winter, spring, summer, summer, fall, winter. Then you could do the southern hemisphere, which should should always be opposite. And if it's not, you know, something's wrong. Um, now, important thing about these diagrams is one, the tilt could be different the tilt could be going this way which would change all the answers and also the revolution of the earth around the sun could be going the other direction which would also change you know these answers so you got to be very careful about um not only first looking at the tilt but also looking at the revolution around the sun so in conclusion yes the earth has seasons because it's tilted on its axis however if you ask people well how does the tilt actually change the temperature of the earth um, most people do not understand that because the earth is tilted it changes the angle that the rays whether they're more direct in the summer or indirect in the winter that changes throughout the year because the earth is tilted and then on top of that because the earth is tilted as it revolves around the sun it makes the length of the day and the amount of heat that the earth's surface receives change and those are the reasons for the seasons. I hope this was helpful.